gardener and said where did you what did you do with him where is he where have you put my lord beloved may we all feel with mary the connection today when the savior called her by name and said mary and everything changed And then we invite the congregation to sing verses 1 and 3 together. Thank you.
In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, almighty God, great Father, Father of life, we praise you on this Easter Sunday, a day of life, a day of love, a day when your power was on full display for us in all realms, we praise you, dear Heavenly Father, for such love that your Son not only died for us, but he arose in life for us, and we can live in that life today. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for eternal life. Thank you for the Apostles' ministry that leads us to Christ. Thank you for the cross that we carry. Thank you for our brother and sister that stands with us in faith and with us in life. Thank you that we have a future unlike any other. We can't even imagine it. We can't even wrap our hearts and our heads around how great you are. But your plan is never ending. It is perpetual, it is continuing, and we praise you for it that we can live in this life today, in word, and in grace, and in sacrament, we are alive. We say thank you again for all that you have done for us. We say thank you for today. We say thank you for tomorrow. We know that you are ever present in your church and around the globe, and we unite with the apostles' ministry that we can be plugged into your heart. Now come and serve us, move us, touch us with your word, bring us to the point where we can celebrate the sacrament in a very, very special way. We praise you for all things and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, blessed Easter. We're thankful that we could greet you and those connected with us, and we read a word from our chief apostle from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 20 and 21. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, for since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. Be seated, please. Our brother Charlie will read for us. Hello, everybody. Happy, happy, happy Sunday. Happy, happy, happy Easter. Blessed Easter, my friends. Today I have a beautiful reading. Pamela gave me a beautiful Bible verse. It's John 20, 1 through 10, 19 through 23. And this is the reading for Easter, the empty tomb. Now the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark. And when the stone had been taken away from the tomb, then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciples whom Jesus loved and said to them, they have taken away the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they had laid him. Peter therefore went out and the other disciples and were going to the tomb. So they both ran together and the other disciples outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he, stoop, and he stooping down and looking in saw the linen clothes lying there, yet he, yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came in following him and went into the tomb. And he saw the linen cloths lying there and the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but folded together in a place by itself. 
Then the other disciples who came to the tomb first, who knew the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away to their own homes. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they, f- they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Thank you. Blessed Easter. Wow, he lives, he lives in my heart. Jesus Christ is right here today. That is the miracle of Easter. Even though we celebrated so many years ago what took place, our chief apostle says the miracle is that he's here in word, in grace, in sacrament. He is here amongst us. He lives. Dear brothers and sisters, in this reading from our brother, it's rather striking. The Lord Jesus says, comes into the circle of his disciples. First, imagine how that felt, that they see him. Wow, he's here. And they must have been really riled up, right? And nervous a little bit. He says twice to them, peace to you. Peace to you. Did he think maybe they didn't listen the first time? I don't think so. He wanted them to get the message of peace, the power of peace. Dear brother and sister, I know that a lot of you are going through lots of stuff in everyday life. Sickness, concern, job, 
family, you name it. Jesus Christ says to you and me today, it's okay. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. I'm stronger than the grave. I'm stronger than death. I'm stronger than all of those things. And I'm telling you, listen to me. Peace to you. What a comfort on Easter for us as his people to say, it's going to be all right. It's not our, my word. It's the word of Jesus Christ. The other thing that's so striking from this reading, Peter and John run to the, to the tomb. They run. These were fishermen, dear brothers and sisters. They were not runners, but they ran. And boy, did they run with excitement in their heart that the one that led them was alive. They rose up in urgency. They didn't sit down. They didn't say, you know, maybe let's have a bite to eat. I heard he, he'll be there, right? We'll see him again. There was action. When they shoot a movie, there's the saying, right? Lights, camera, action. It's all on action. This is, this is the Lord on full display. The power of God is no greater than this moment here when the Lord arises. And dear brothers and sisters, that is the message today. Our chief apostle says, oh, we can rise too. We can resurrect too. You know why? Only one reason. Jesus Christ resurrected and rose and he has given us the promise. Even use the word, the chief apostle, the guarantee of eternal life with him. Dear brothers and sisters, we could stop the service now and say, enough, that's enough. Eternal life with Jesus Christ forever. But our chief apostle says, well, there's a few things we can learn that we can take into our heart what does the resurrection of Christ mean to you and me? Well, there's one big thing. Jesus Christ lives. He gives life. Not just life, dear brothers and sisters. He arose, God brought him back from the dead. He arose in a new body, in a brand new transfigured body. Think of that not just from the dead, in a glorified body. And that makes eternal life possible for you and me. He's the first one, Paul says, and Paul is fighting a battle here. Paul is like a lawyer. The people are not believing in the resurrection of the dead. They're saying, Paul, you've lost it. You, you, you don't know what you're talking about. He says, we don't believe that. And there was, in Athens, they made fun of him. They're making fun of the, the apostle, and he is getting discouraged. And he comes with these powerful points, and he says, wait a minute. If, if Christ didn't rise, then guess what? Our faith is empty. My preaching is empty. You're still in your sin. Guess what? We're all done. And he, man, I don't know how they took this letter, but he gave it to them in a powerful way because they needed it, because they didn't believe. And you know what our chief apostle says today? Oh, dear brother and sister, how are you doing on your faith? We say, oh, in the Christian world, it's celebrated in this day in a wonderful way. And, and we don't disagree, but some believe it's just symbolic. What a nice story. Jesus Christ, yeah, he came back to life. Oh, that's nice. Wait a minute. It's much more than that. He arose in a glorified body and is coming back for us. And just like Adam caused sin, right? It said by man came sin. 
but by man, through Jesus Christ, came this resurrection of the dead. All of those that are alive, all of those that are, have passed away in Christ, they all come alive. Every soul that believes and follows Jesus Christ can come to this point of life. During the Lent period, I have to read this to you because it, it touched me so much. We heard about Lazarus being raised from the dead too. And Jesus Christ talks about himself as the resurrection. In John 11, listen to this. He's having this interaction with Martha. And he says, Martha, listen to this. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha says, well, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, listen to this, brother and sister. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever believes, lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said, yes, Lord, I believe. You are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world. I am the resurrection and the life. One of his I am statements, the Lord is saying, there's one way you get there. It's, it's right here. There was a theologian once that said that we live our life from one Easter to another. Easter with the Lord, he arose, the Redeemer arose, and one day he's coming back. And that will be like an Easter, our Easter day, where we arise. Christ gives us life, and he wants us to rise up in this life. And we rise up together today. Dear brothers and sisters, I had an experience a couple months ago. I ran in a race. This body really doesn't run. I, I, I ran in a race. And everybody said, oh, you'll, it'll be fine. You'll do this. I'm like, I'm not running six miles. I can't do that. And it was a walk and a run and a walk and a run. And before you knew it, I was running with some family members, friends, and the, the race was over. And I beat my time. I was like, how did that happen? There was so much energy. I was just running along for it, and before you knew it was over. Dear brothers and sisters, on this Easter day, let's all run together just like those disciples ran. Let's rise up. I know maybe every day you don't feel like physically rising up, right? Maybe today, it was a long, a long week, right? Maybe today you snuggled in bed and wanted to sort of stay there. Some days that's okay. But spiritually, we always want to rise up. If we're going to rise one day with the Lord, we have to rise today. And when the Lord gives life, what happened to his disciples? They believed again. They had new faith. I wonder how the Lord felt talking to Martha. Do you believe? Do you believe? What would he say to him about me? Do you believe, John? Do you believe in this time? Those disciples on the way to Emmaus as well sort of didn't know, they didn't see the Lord Jesus at first. He broke bread, and it says their whole life changed. Their hearts burned, and they also got back quickly to the group. Dear brothers and sisters, we know what we believe. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, our chief apostle tells us today, is a real event. We believe it. Jesus, in his life, gives us new faith. And faith is a process. I think of Peter, right? Peter, he was on the up and down cycle 
Um, I can relate with Peter, right? He believed, sometimes it, it, it waned a little bit. And then the Lord Jesus says, oh, he was talking to them. And then Peter says, Lord, where should we go? Only you have the words of eternal life. And we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ. So even he admitted, you know, we have come to this point. He wasn't there all the time. Dear brothers and sisters, our faith is a process. The Lord knew that. It's a process. But when we see that the Lord is alive and I can be alive in him, doesn't that cause me new faith? And the Lord, his disciples were a little sad one day, and he's talking them up again, right? And he says, you know, you believe in God. Why don't you believe me? In my father's house are many mansions, but I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I'm going to do that, I'm going to come again and receive you. Was, was that coming again just for those that are living? The beautiful part about what our chief apostle tells us today, the message is we all can resurrect. Those that have died in Christ, those that are living on earth in Christ, we all can live this life in faith. First, in looking at him in life and in faith. That gives me new faith. And what comes from faith? Christ gives us hope. That's the last point. Hope is a good thing. That comes from faith. And it feels good, dear brothers and sisters, to say even to myself, I have a legitimate hope. You have a little legitimate hope. I have a legitimate hope that I can resurrect and have eternal life with the Lord. Wow. In in the Articles of Faith, I looked up article number nine, dear brothers and sisters. Let's see if you, this is a little piece of it. I didn't read, we're not going to read the whole thing. It was a long one. I believe, listen to this, that the Lord Jesus will return as surely as he ascended into heaven and that he will take to himself the first fruits of the dead and living who have hoped for and were prepared for his coming. In my busy life, I find myself, it's, it's not in front of me, the Lord's return. I'm being honest. Busy, busy, busy. Oh yeah, I know it's going to happen one day. Hoped for, am I one that hopes for his coming? and prepares for it. And we can ask ourselves, why hope? Well, Paul comes to the Thessalonians and he says, I'll tell you why you hope. I'll tell you why you hope. Because one day, one day, dear brothers and sisters, the Lord's going to rise with those that have died in Christ and he's going to go and gather those that are living on the earth and meet us in the clouds. And you know what it says in the scriptures there? I don't think any more beautiful words. So we will always be with the Lord. Okay. That's all. But that's everything. So we will always be with the Lord. Easter. That's what Easter is. I want to always be with the Lord. Today, I want to be with him. He lives in my heart, absolutely. But I also want to be with him in the peace that he gives. I want to rise up today and recognize that Christ lives, and I want to live inside of him. And he lives inside of me, and that causes new faith and new hope. And dear brothers and sisters, the Easter action for us 
is try to live our life in anticipation of that. With life, with faith, with hope, determination, not to throw in the towel, but to think about every day of my life, if I can try to think about it. And so, I will always be with the Lord one day. That's it. And then that drives me and drives my actions, drives my belief, drives my decisions, drives my, my improving to become the Christian that Christ wants of me. One day, dear brothers and sisters, we will always be with the Lord. Amen. Amen. So we have a hymn. And we can stand and sing that hymn, and then priest Otayaro can continue on. Dear brothers and sisters, and blessed Easter. So, when the evangelist, one of the last things that he said was that we will always be with our Heavenly Father. We'll always be with the Lord. That's something really profound, very deep. Before we left the sacristy this morning, he also said something. He says, You know, he, I really love the Easter songs. I do too. Because they're all a victory. We won, we won already which is something maybe that we don't get to experience all the time. But in this, we can say that we won. And what is it that we won? Our Heavenly Father has offered us salvation. And the door is open for us to just go through there. It's pretty much a done deal. There's a little piece of it that we have to finish, that we have to carry on. But that goes beyond our understanding. So at the beginning of this week, and it was quite a week, our district apostle gave us a message. If anybody was fortunate enough to to enjoy it, and it said on there that we should take time to really enjoy the peace that this Holy Week brings to us, right? He said that we should take time to contemplate, to really find a place find the time to just, with our thoughts, and just try to focus in on our, on our souls and see what it is that we need so we can go into that door, so that we can go through that open door that our Heavenly Father has given us the opportunity to. Did you ever, did you ever offer something to somebody and they didn't take it, and you think, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to offer this person this great thing that I think is going to be great. And then they say, no, I'm going to wait for a better offer. Or I'm going to, I'm going to wait for the chocolate cake. Or I'm going to wait for the whatever it is that you like. And you're, how does that make you feel? Sometimes it makes you feel hurt a little bit. Oh, you know, I just gave, I offered this person this. How that make our Heavenly Father feel if that was us? And we'd say, you know, I'm opening the door. I made this gigantic sacrifice, and now we're not going to take advantage of it. And it is something that we need to take advantage of. The evangelist also said that faith creates hope. That's such a great thing. And our faith, we always 
strive to make it stronger so we can have that hope because hope is what kind of keeps us going, right? Well, we hope, you know, we don't really know what's going to be out there, but we hope it's always going to be something positive. And what is this relationship that we have with our Heavenly Father? What is it based on? It's based, based purely on love. That's all it is. And we don't even understand that. He chose us for no particular reason that we know, but he chose to save us, that which goes beyond our comprehension. And it just reminds me of a, of a text word that I looked up last night, Philippians 4, 7, and it said, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. And it made me think back of something. Way back in, in, in Bayside, I know that some of you will probably remember, we had a brother, Brother Paris. And Brother Paris actually lived to be a grand old age. I think he hit the century mark at least. But the last time that I saw him, he was well into his 90s. And the thing with Brother Paris was that he needed help getting from the car to the pew, and then from the pew back to the car. And it was usually priest Gleason that would take him to and from church. And, and somebody always had the privilege of taking him to the pew and then walking him out. And one time I had to, they asked me, say, can you take Brother Paris out to his car? I said, sure, absolutely. So I had a little time with him. And I said, hey, Brother Paris, I said, what, what do you attribute this, your longevity? How, what is it that you do? And he said, I, I don't know. I just keep breathing. <laughs> and that was his understanding. It was just simple. He didn't know all the stuff that needed to go in there, whether he treated his body right, whether he ate right, whether he exercised, whatever it was that he did before that. And it's the same thing for us. I don't understand why our Heavenly Father picked us, why he chose for us to be saved during this time, why he sent his most valuable love that he had, and he came, he sent him down here so that he can be sacrificed in the most humble way, the Lord Jesus was alone. He was by himself when he was up on the cross. But he still did everything for us. So it's something that we should really always pray on and always thank that we have that opportunity. Amen. Amen. Now we prepare for forgiveness of sins and Holy Communion. At the end of this chapter, in verse 57, very uplifting words, Paul says. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Before that, he says, you know, Hades, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? But thanks be to God when our priest was serving and talking about this peace, our thanks in acknowledging the victory that Jesus Christ earned should bring that peace. That's what we hear in each divine service. When the minister says the absolution and then says the peace of the risen one, the risen Lord be with you. The one that conquered, the one that gained the victory, my Lord lives, he is stronger. If there was any question, right, there could have been a question, oh, is he the son of God? No question on Easter, no question. Question answered, the Lord lives. And the choir will sing this repentance hymn, dear brothers and sisters, the way that I celebrate the victory of Jesus Christ is again through rising up in action. What does that mean? That means repentance. That means forgiveness. That means trying to make my life right. Get my house in order in each divine service. Try to make it right with the Lord, with each other. Lots of work. Lots of work. A lifetime with a work, but worth it. And that's how we celebrate this victory today. That's how, when I can say, Lord, you know, your victory means so much to me. 
I thank you. By taking action in forgiving and forgetting and trying to repent and trying to do these various things. Dear brothers and sisters, on this Easter day, it is our privilege to give thanks to the Lord. There are no words. Thank you just is not good enough. But the Lord knows that. He knows that too. He knows how we feel. And that's it. Coming back to the choir, that's what lives in my heart. You live in my heart, and you just know how I feel. There was, yesterday, there was a lot of emotion, right, in our congregation. And someone was outside and gave a couple of hugs, crying hugs. And we said, no words. You don't have to, we don't have to say anything, right? Sometimes we think we have to say all these words that there was nothing said. But that was good because it's felt in our heart. Dear brothers and sisters, may it also be for us too that we, we give our thanks in the best way to the Lord. And now we continue on our path of faith. Amen. We can rise now and pray the Lord's Prayer together. And we pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from the evil one for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever Amen. In the commission of my son to the apostle, I proclaim unto you the glad tidings that in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, your sins are forgiven. The peace of the risen one abide with you. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for that peace. Thank you for the grace and forgiveness through your son. Thank you that we're made alive today because of his sacrifice on the cross. Thank you that we have a path forward that we can rise up 
and can rise up one day with you. And thank you, dear Lord, for these moments that we can come in communion with Christ. Grant us open hearts, a very special connection on this Easter day, and that we can have the strength that we need to rise up into the future. We ask and pray with thankful hearts and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now we shall celebrate Holy Communion. And now the Lord's table is prepared. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I consecrate bread and wine for Holy Communion and lay there upon the once brought, eternally valid sacrifice of Jesus Christ. For the Lord took the bread and wine, he gave thanks and said, this is my body which is broken for you. This is my blood of the new covenant given for many for the remission of sins, eat and drink, do this in remembrance of me, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this wine, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Amen. Amen. The body and blood of Jesus given for you. Amen. Congregation can be seated. The Lord now invites you to receive Holy Communion.
we can rise and give thanks now. Almighty God, dear loving Father, thank you so very much for these moments. Dear Father, we cannot move forward without you. And we don't want to. We want to move forward with your power, with your blessing, with your help into this new time period. We've celebrated Lent and have come to this high point of Easter, and now we want to move on in our life of faith and continue on and run the race and run the course that you have for us. But we know it's filled with worry and concern and cross and many battles. Give us all that we need to overcome. We want to be worthy for the day when your son will come. And we ask, please, dear Lord, grant us the help that we need to overcome. Our own selves, the things that stand in our way, that we can, with deep joy and thanksgiving, face the future knowing that you are with us, you will help us, you will guide us, you will protect us. Bless all of those in homes and in hospitals. Bless those that suffer and mourn. Bless those that carry life under their heart. Bless those that are struggling in so many ways, physically or a job or whatever it may be. You know the needs of your people. Bless our offerings that we have brought to you. Bless the gift and the giver. And please, dear Heavenly Father, make us worthy for the great day when your Son will come. We ask and pray all things with a thankful heart, and in Jesus' name, amen. amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. So be seated, please. Love from our apostle to you on this Easter day, and I wish you a lots of joy in your family circle, and thanks for being here this morning. We have a closing hymn. So for our closing hymn this morning, we're going to have a choir and congregational hymn for this Easter morning. So... There's a bit of a long intro, the choir sings a few phrases, and then we come in as a congregation. The choir will sing a verse in between, and then we will finish off with a powerful verse of the third verse of the song. You watch for your entrances. Thank you.
just have a, one or two short announcements. Blessed Easter, everyone. We just have one or two short announcements. You may notice, well, Blessed Easter, everyone. You may notice on the Gatheria there are some plastic bags with eggs. Yes, it's Easter today. We're not going to do the Easter egg hunt today, but when it's a little warmer with a little better weather outside, so in the next coming weeks, we're going to have the Easter egg hunts for the kids. So if you'd like to participate, you'd like to stuff some eggs with candy, those bags are on the uh, Gatheria. The white bags have 50 eggs, just so if you have a sense of what you want to purchase, uh, 50 eggs, the Ziploc bags have 25. So thank you very much. The youth have announcement too. Thanks. So the youth um, fundraiser plant sale has begun. We have printed 25 copies in the back. If you know you want flowers, go ahead and take one. If you're not sure and want to see what's on the list, go ahead and take one. No need to put it orders in today. We have enough going on. The next two Sundays after service, Sandy and I will be at the coffee bar and we'll take all your offers. And then on April 14th is the last day. So we appreciate your help in advance. The funds really do help the youth group. Blessed Easter. <laughs>